right, so I just recorded two videos on my favorite uh, zodiac signs or the zodiac signs I feel have been most compatible with me during the course of my life based on my personal experience. And now I'm going to do one on Myers-Briggs. Uh, so Myers-Briggs, I'm an INTJ, uh, but I don't always score INTJ. I score INTJ about 85% of the time, uh, but sometimes I get INTP. And I realized that like real like Myers-Briggs people are going to say like, that's impossible. You can't have two different types because it's all about the functions. Um, nevertheless, 85% of the time I score INTJ, 15% of the time I score INTP. Let's say I'm an INTJ with uh, some INTP traits. So, and be done with it and, and not have the controversy. Uh, so again, you know, they're, they're the signs you're supposed to be compatible with on paper, and I'm, I know what those are. And actually, this list, I think, is actually pretty similar, so it kind of validates that a little bit. Um, but this is just based on my own personal experience. Unlike the videos about the Zodiac, I feel like friends, close friends, and drinking buddies, I don't need to make separate lists for them. Uh, because whether it's a relationship or... A, you know, male friend or whatever, I feel like it still tends to fall into one of these five types. Um, but I do think, you know, some types are more well suited to me in terms of romantic relationship, close friend or male drinking buddy or someone you hang out with, go to the movies, go bowling, that kind of shit. So let's get started. My number one would be ENFP. Um, I think for this, this, the friendship compatibility is really high and the romance compatibility is pretty high, but it's, it's more platonic than it is romantic, but it's still romantic, but just m more platonic. The platonic potential is higher. Um, and I think the reason for that is, you know, ENFPs in, they're just, they're, they're really supportive and they tend to be, in my experience, at least the ENFPs I've been friends with, they're into kind of uh, psychology and kind of personality stuff and spirituality a little bit. Um, so very, very compatible interests, uh, but they tend to be into it for like a very different reason than me. Like I find all that stuff intellectually fascinating. And I think they actually have kind of a practical application for it. My application is like somewhat Machiavellian, probably, to be honest with you. Somewhat like, uh, I don't know, just not Machiavellian, but because I am not naturally maybe socially gifted, trying to make sense of, of that stuff intellectually. Whereas theirs is more, they just, they have a direct interest in other people and how other people are feeling. And so there's a compatibility there um, that you can, you're talking about the same topics, but they're coming from a very different point of view and it's a very different kind of emotional frame. And I've just found them to be a really good person. Like if you have a bad day, you can always talk to an ENFP. And uh, so ENFPs have been a, like just a very positive, Part of my life uh, so yeah and I, I feel like it's a two-way street because you can kind of augment you're talking about similar topics and coming from a different point of view so they're teaching you things about things you're interested in uh, that you may not necessarily necessarily have thought about in that sort of way and you're also doing the same thing for them so I think there's a bit of a symbiosis there um, and like this, this is a little weird, but in, in terms of a relationship, it's like they can be kind of the diplomat and you can be kind of the strategist, if that makes sense. Like you can be taking care of the, the business and like how to, your, your taxes and this kind of stuff. And they can be taking care of like, uh, the who's friends with who and you know, who to invite to a party and you know, let's go to a, an event or whatever. Um, so they, they kind of take you out of your comfort zone a little bit and, uh, yeah, just it's very symbiotic, very compatible. Uh, next would be INTPs. 
like straight INTPs because uh, you could just talk about stuff and there's very little emotion involved in it. I'll give you an example, politics. I hate talking about politics with people because to me, most people with politics, it's like a sports for them. It's just they, they want to root for their own team. They're very emotionally invested in it. But like an INTP, you can start talking about like policy and like geopolitics and get really into it. And there is no emotional like layer to the conversation almost at all. And uh, politics is just an example. You can do that with almost any topic. And intellectually, they can be someone who has a huge diversity of interests. And so you can keep these conversations, you know, going a lot. I really enjoy hanging out with INTPs. Uh, I really do. So then the next one would be INFJ. And this one, kind of, kind of the opposite of ENFP, where I think the romance is really high, and the platonic is still high, but it's more romance. Um, it's kind of like I said in the, the Zodiac video about the Pisces. I somewhat equate INFJ to, to Pisces. Like, I just find them to be enchanting. That's the key word. Like, they're off in their own, like, creative dreamland, like, inner world. And they have a little, like, of a melancholy kind of a quality, which uh, is... It probably hurts to feel that, but from the outside, I find that endearing and, and you know, a somewhat enchanting personality quirk. Um, yeah, they just, they have like a, a mysteriousness about them, but it's, they have no element of danger. So the combination of mysteriousness and the lack of threat, uh, makes them someone who just like, they're like a little bit of a puzzle and you want to figure them out and you also want to help them with things. And because they're introverted and they're also intuitive, you have a relationship where your lifestyles are very, very similar, but you're, and you're, INTJ is, you also have, are thinking a lot, you're in your own internal world, uh, you're creating scenarios and trying to figure out how those are gonna play out, this kind of thing. And INFJs are also doing it, but my scenarios are filled with, like, um, how am I gonna make, <laughs> like uh, philosophy and finance and creative work, but in terms of like, what would the lighting look like? What would the story structure be? This, this kind of stuff. And their internal world is like rainbows and unicorns. And it's this weird adventure time style, like fever dream. And those two things, I think when they come together, they produce something bigger than the sum of its parts. And I feel like that is a metaphor for the compatibility of the relationship entirely. And then the last one will be ENTJ. And this one's dicey. Because uh, you can be good friends with an ENTJ, but you got to be careful. Because one, they'll fuck you over. Two, you're not their only friend. Like if you're INTJ or something, uh, it's, it's kind of like this Spock-Kirk dynamic, right? If you find a good Kirk, who's not telling you what to do, who appreciates your advice, who understands that you're an individual and you're not part of the crew in the same way that their other sort of minions are. I, ENTJs didn't have a lot of minions. Then you can be friends, like if, if you're treating each other as equals. The problem with ENTJ is they tend to be socially aware and they tend to start doing these dominance behaviors. And it, I tend to be perceptive. And as soon as I start sensing that, I'm just like, I'm not down for this. I don't need you. I'm out. Like, I'm helping you, bro. Like, uh, so, yeah, I'm not one of your, like, flunkies. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a little tricky to have a relationship with an ENTJ, especially an immature ENTJ. But they are very intellectually capable and apt, and they're good at executing things. And you tend to be able to talk about plans with them in a way that is grounded and creative and original and realistic, they tend to get it. Like I could talk to an ENTJ about some 
high concept, abstract, theoretical stuff that I would not say to 99% of most people because they just wouldn't get it and they would get it. And that's a rare quality that almost entirely makes up for the rest of their qualities. Um, so yeah, ENTJs I like a lot, but you have to be really careful with ENTJs in my experience. One ENTJ is not equal to another. And uh, yeah, they'll start doing that, that dominance, you know, pony show on you pretty early. And that's a big, that's a no from me, dog. So yeah, uh, those are my uh, five, as an INTJ, my five uh, Myers-Briggs most compatible friends and have historically been the personality types of people who have been in my life. So, all right, that's that one. Cheers.